murderers or righteous vigilantes? That's a good question. The Sangre de Cristo National Heritage Area is one of the most culturally diverse places in Colorado. This gives us a lot to celebrate, but it's also been a source of tension. The story of the Espinosa brothers is a good example. The Utes are the first people to live in the area, and at different times, the Hickory Apache, Comanche, Kiowa, Cheyenne, and others have been connected to the region. In the early 1800s, Spanish settlers arrived, bringing with them their language, Catholic religion, and culture. This developed into a Hispano culture with a unique mix of native and Spanish heritage. Then in 1861, our area became part of Colorado territory. Tension quickly grew between the Hispano residents and Colorado's government around issues of citizenship, property ownership, and taxes. As Anglo settlers were encouraged to populate the area, Hispanos lost much of their land and grazing rights. Many Hispanos spoke out against this injustice, and the Anglo settlers started to fear that there would be violence. When Fort Garland was established, the United States government said it was to protect Anglo settlers from Native Americans, but many believed it was also to keep the Hispano community in check. Felipe and Vivian Espinosa were Hispano brothers who lived in the village of San Judas de Tadeo. Just a few years after Fort Garland was established, the brothers were accused in a robbery. A unit of soldiers from the fort was sent to arrest them, which caused a major shootout. Eventually, the brothers escaped, but the soldiers burned down their homes, confiscating their belongings and their livestock. This left the Espinosas, wives, young children, and extended family completely destitute, without food, shelter, or clothing. Over the next two months, the Espinosa brothers were on the run, and there was a rash of murders of Anglo settlers along the Front Range and Central Rockies. Denver newspapers reported that these were revenge murders committed by the Espinosas, whom they called Mexican bandits. The exact number of victims is unknown, but reports vary between 11 and 32 people. Based on the rumor of their murderous ways, the Espinosa brothers and their cousin Vicente, who traveled with them, were tracked down and killed without a trial. Their legacy is perhaps the most interesting part of the story. In the Anglo press, they were described as bloodthirsty Mexican murderers, the incarnation of the worst fears of the Anglo settler. But in the Sangre de Cristo National Heritage Area, they are often viewed as folk heroes, vigilantes who defended their homeland and stood up against injustice. Some historians even believe the Espinosas were unfairly blamed for murders that they could not possibly have committed because of how far apart the locations of the murders were in a short number of days. So were they bad guys? Were they good guys? Were they simply victims of bad press? There's no simple answer, but by exploring complicated stories from our past, like this one, we are better equipped to understand the diverse culture in the Sangre de Cristo National Heritage Area. This video was created by the Sangre de Cristo National Heritage Area as part of their work in historic preservation and telling the stories of our community. Thanks for watching.